wonderful to see y'all here. You know, it's a little chilly, but you know, you turn on that TV and you look up north and you say, thank the good Lord we are where we are. Yes. Well, anyways, before we get started this morning, we do have a few announcements that we'd like to go over with you. And Jeff, if you want to take me into the announcements. Okay, well, I'll start and we'll catch up here in a minute. The first thing um, on the agenda would be today, we are going to have our annual memorial service at 1 o'clock. Um, I encourage you all to come to this. For those of you who have been here in the past and know what we do as a community, it's a wonderful way to honor our friends and loved ones who have passed in 2023. So come at 1 o'clock. Um, come early if you like, because I know um, Barb and, and uh, I know Lynn had worked before she and Dave went home. Um, but several people have worked so hard. Sharon worked so hard to try to make this an event that we can all come and celebrate the love of those that we have loved. So come a little early if you like. Thank you, Sharon. Come a little early if you like. And um, you can see what will be posted on the front. They'll have some tables. Sharon is also reminding me that we will be uh, taping this as well. So it will be on Facebook and on YouTube, Sharon. We're going to push it up to YouTube as well. So if you have any friends or family that you know that couldn't be here for today's service, be sure to let them know they can view the service um, on that media. All right, January 16th, we will have our Bible study on Tuesday at 2 o'clock here at the clubhouse. Please come. We're going to be in John, right, Pastor? We're going to be in John studying, so come and enjoy um, the Bible study, you know, it's, it's a, an area that you can ask questions in church. It's like you might have a question, but you're not going to ask him during church. On Tuesday is your time that we can interact one with another as we study the word. On the 21st, next Sunday is going to be our fellowship Sunday at 9 o'clock. So come early. Come a little hungry if you like, because we'll have some coffee and some chocolate and some a few refreshments. Lagonda and Mason are always so wonderful to provide that for us. So come early next Sunday from 9 to 9.30. I'm coming in and out of here. From 9 to 9.30 um, before church starts then at 9.30. And then um, we have our ladies' luncheon on the 22nd um, at 11.30. Um, there is still a sign-up sheet in the back. Um, as Joey and Lucretia have said, if you don't sign up, that doesn't mean you can't come. You certainly can. This just gives them an idea for setup of how many tables, chairs, or whatever that we need. Bring your own salad to share and come at 1130 for a little social time. And then eating time will be about noon. Did I get that right? Thank you. Woo! A plus for the day. All right. And then on February 2nd, we're going to have our church dinner. That will be at 5.30 and then entertainment at 6.30. So again, we um, do have, Lois, do we have that sign-up sheet for the church dinner, I believe? Perfect. Okay, when you get to this corner, Jim, or whoever has it, we'll pass it over onto this side. Okay, thank you getting a pop. Okay, thank you. So anyways, um, make sure to sign up for that church dinner. We are going to have um, it also on the ledge back here so other people can sign up um, during the course of the next couple weeks. Again, please remind your friends and neighbors that this is not just a church event. It's a community dinner. So we would like for all of those who can and, and would like to to come um, and enjoy the, the camaraderie of our park and enjoy some wonderful music at 630. Uh, the Sky Celtic Revival, you will love them. We also need greeters, so remember, um, if you would like to be that person at the door to welcome those coming into our church on a Sunday morning, um, please do that. We thank um, Laganda Bernice for greeters for us this morning. Thank you, too, for doing that. We certainly appreciate that as well. Um, we put in attendance on the bulletin and on here last Sunday. We had 52. We are growing a little bit in our numbers as our, some of our snowbirds are returning. So again, thank you all for being here. Uh, just um, a couple of things I wanted to mention. We are going to be putting together, uh, I'll call it a little bit of a history book about our church. Um, so if you have any pictures or any information about the church, and I know 
Um, we have some folks who have been here, I know Maurice, for years as far as knowing the history of our church started in the mid-80s. So if you have any information that you would like us to put together, it's going to be a combination of a photo album, a fact sheet kind of a thing. But if you have any information, and Lagonda, can I ask them to see you about that if they have information that they would like to put into this book? That would be wonderful. One last thing. I've talked with Sharon Kelsey, and I know Lois has been in touch with her as well. And Sharon sent a thank you note for the uh, recognition that we gave her at the end of December when she went into her official retirement. But I, I'm hoping that we will see her back here one of these Sundays to play for us. She sent this note and asked me to read it. I thank God for you. Dear Citrus Ridge Community Church, thank you so much for the beautiful nativity scene. Cal and I will cherish it forever. I went shopping today with some of my moolah. Had a blast. Cal misbehaved, so I did not share. Maybe he'll learn to be a good boy. <laughs> we sure enjoy your church. And then the message says, so many times I say a simple prayer of thanks for every beautiful thing you are to us. Love, Sharon, Sharon, and Cal. So again, I will let her know, and she, she was very emphatic about, please read my thank you note, because she loves you all. All right, is there anything that I've missed before we go into our service time? All right, as we prepare our hearts to serve him and love him who first loved us. Dennis, if you would, if you would please play our prelude. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. That's wonderful. Ah, it is so good to see you guys. You know, since growing up, my mother always took care of me, making sure I had my lunch money wrapped up in my handkerchief to take to school. A dollar and a quarter a week. Neat. Pam came up here and she said, be sure and put your mic on. Pam, thank you for being, I love mothers, I just do. <laughs> so nice to see you. You know, we want to take turns just coming up here and looking back this way. You guys, uh, you look wonderful. And uh, seeing some of you, I'm making friends with you. And um, it's so good to see you. We've, today's a special day. We have a church, which I'm so excited about today's message. I just, I just can't wait. I was walking the floors at home today uh, a little primed to get before getting here. And, uh, and anyway, we had a memorial service today with a lot of just... Uh, 
uh, 13 people on our list, and many of them are here today, and thank you for being at church. Um, I'm telling you, there's not an answer to the world's dilemma, including the things we go through, outside of these words of this wonderful, faithful, kind, long-suffering God, that he would come down and become a part of us. You know, Scripture says that uh, he was a man of sorrow and acquainted, Isaiah said, with grief. So you're not alone. Uh, we live in a world that has lots of problems, and, and today we'll remember some of the wonderful loved ones and friends that uh, uh, have been so special to us and done so much for us. I was looking through the list, and many of them I know personally, and it's just so nice to, to remember. Um, matter of fact, there's two places in the New Testament that talks about a memorial service. It's just this week, and being asked to, to be here, it's caused me to look back at the text of Scripture and find the information out, and I've been excited about that, but luckily, or for your benefit, the only thing I'll do today is a welcoming, but uh, gosh, I'd like to talk about it. I would. So it's just so thrilling to see you today. And so uh, we'll enjoy worship. We'll worship this great God that we serve, and uh, he'll tell us today some wonderful news that will be, I think, amazing to us. I love amazing stuff, and uh, it's just kind of like Christmas. You open up a gift, and you think, gosh, I wasn't expecting this. It's just like that. So um, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, thank you for uh, allowing us to be friends and to getting to know each other. In your providence and your kindness to us, uh, you've allowed us to touch each other's lives and the people that we will memorialize today has touched our life. Uh, they've touched uh, so many people that they're not even aware of, which is true of just the way life is. So we thank you for this coming event that we'll have today at 1. We look so forward to remembering some of these wonderful memories and honoring them. And, and sharing, Father, with one another the, the pains of life and, and the joys of, of those around you that are comforting to us as you are. Father, please bless your people today. Uh, multiply us in ways that, not just in numbers, but in knowledge. Uh, Father, give us an understanding as your disciples wanted to know more about you. As the Apostle Paul says, that, that you might know him in the fullness of of what he has done for us. Father, bless your church today. We're just so anxious to hear from you. Amen. Pam? Mother? Yes, dear. You know what? I tell you, when, you, when we come to worship, isn't it wonderful to have a pastor that sets such an example of enthusiasm and his love for the Lord. And you know what? This song we're going to sing is a song that allows us to actually rejoice in what Jesus has done for us. On page 438, we find the song, Jesus Saves. Um, if you could, we'll sing the first, second, and the fourth verse, Dennis. Um, and if you would, and can, would you like to stand with me as we sing this morning? <laughs> Yeah. 
standing if you would it's in the back of your hymnal and uh as always i would ask you church what is it what is it that we do believe i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seateth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You can be seated. We have prayer request. Uh, in our here in this one, right? Oh, well, we got them both places. Okay, the family of Marine. Uh, I remember that family. That's a tough time. It's just it's hard to it's hard to explain. You just each time it's different for everybody. It's, just, it's not the same ever. Uh, Randy Miller, uh, Sylvia Kellner, uh, Sheila Bagwell, Marilyn Sabus, Linda Haskins, of course, Ed Heron, um, Nancy Wilsinski, Dave Kersey, uh, Betty Kersey, uh, Nick, uh, Tiana? Uh, Tiani. Tiani? Tiani. It's what? Tiani. Tiani, thank you. I need all the help I can get. Okay, all right. And then Tony Pickett. Uh, and those that are uh, are still in that, if I can read it right, suffering in Israel and Gaza. Yes, and also our services today, the people here that will be uh, once again reminded of the of that event, which is difficult. Um, it is just wonderful that we can go to the Lord in prayer um, and take our burdens there uh, because, as the song says, He cares for us. He really does care for us. And uh, if you have children, and many of us do, when your children come to you and they express their needs, there's nothing better than to meet that request and to see their face just light up and also children are especially unique and as we are too with our Lord they trust us uh, they'll just do what we ask because they know that we won't let them down uh, never break a promise to them well God is that way he's faithful he's just he's uh, he's long-suffering he's kind toward us and so uh, it's just wonderful that the Lord can do these things for us and that we can pray for these needs that we have. Uh, there's lots of needs, especially those that are not up on there. There's some that's, un, that's unspoken request, and I know you have those needs. We all have needs and the things that we're concerned about, and we all are. My wife and I have those things we don't express sometimes, and we have some we do express. And so uh, just remember the needs that are on the bulletin there and that we have today. Uh, Father... Um, once again, we come to you because uh, you will hear us. Your son says, Father, I know you always hear me. You always hear me. Um, but because these people around me, um, let them know too. And so what a joy it is to have people uh, that we pray for and that you uh, intercede and, and you bring healing. Uh, you bring restoration. 
you, you bring joy back to a broken life or a, a devastated life. You do that. And those around you said, how can these things be? It's because of you. It's because of who you are. It's because of how you look toward us. You pity us as your children because we are helpless. Uh, Father, we're just, we're just children, and, 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 and we know that you care for us. Father, be with us today during this special event at 1. Also this morning as we hear to worship you and to hear what you have said to us. Father, we pray you would do that. And also as we pray, we pray this way as you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, if our ushers will come forward today in our giving. Look what a good-looking bunch of guys here. <laughs> people today for their benevolence toward others. Everything we have is a gift from you, and yet it, what a joy it is to be able to share the blessings of life with others. Father, bless this people. Father, keep them healthy. Uh, give them great uh, success in their ventures they do in life, and Father, help us to be a wonderful neighbor to our friends. And help us to tell others the wonderfulness of you and how the gospel has just not only changes our life, and it is every day, but it's also available to them. Father, bless your church, I pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dennis. Pam, Jeff, all you guys. I tell you, our church board is wonderful. They, uh, if you don't get a chance to be around some of those people, just go and just see what kind of characters they are. Be kind of nice to do. And uh, I think you'll find that uh, they're just about like everybody else in need of a friend. Okay, we're in uh, first, second, second Peter today. Um, Today, let me just say what my plans are. I, I'm going to tell us who is speaking to us. These are the interrogatives that's in this text. Who's speaking to us, what he's telling us, who it is, what he's telling us, why he's telling us these things, and then as Nicodemus asked Jesus this question, 
how can these things be? So the interrogatives will be this. Who, what, why, and how? Now, Father, help us to, help us to see the wonderfulness of this letter uh, written by someone that is a, a first-hand eyewitness of you as he tells us these things. And, and even as he's facing death, it's important. So bless us, I ask today. First off, this man is Peter. Let me tell you a little bit about this, this Simon Peter guy. Uh, he's the chief apostle. Uh, Peter, James, and John's are the ones that went up on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. He's the key guy uh, up on the rock of what Jesus tells him uh, who he is. Uh, he's going to build the church. And he doesn't mean on, on Peter himself, but he means on the, what Peter's words are, that Peter represents, and, and Peter knowing Jesus up on the rock of who Christ is, he's going to change this man's life. And anybody that's ever ran into Jesus, you are different. There'll be something changed about you. So he is the chief apostle. He's the one that denied Jesus. You know, when he got in a pinch, sound familiar? You get in a pinch and you deny it. Because it's going to hurt you if you say, I know him. I'm like him. I like him. So this is the guy that denied him. The night of his arrest. And he warms himself by the fire. And someone says, hey, aren't you one of that band? And he says, no, no, not me. And to make it uh, uh, understandable, a friend of mine says sometimes, says when he gets angry, he cusses. And he usually calls God's name and uses God's name in a cuss word because he thinks it has more authority. So uh, Peter was done a little cussing there that evening to prove to these people that I don't know this man. That's what text says. So he denied Christ. Also, he rebuked Christ many times. This guy. Jesus would say something, and Peter would say, no, that's not true. That's not going to happen to you. You're not going to die. We're not going to let that happen. So uh, he, he is someone that's the chief. He's, he denies Christ. He rebukes Christ. And by the way, he's the one on the Mount of Transfiguration. God takes him up there, Jesus does, and he lets him hear the Father speak from heaven, and even up there he gets it wrong. Sound like us? A little bit like us? He said, it's good for me to be up here. Let me build a temple for Moses, because Moses, now get this, us that are represented today with a memorial service, God is talking to Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. And they've been gone for a long time. And Peter says, man, it's good to be up here. It's good to be up here. Well, let's build three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you, Jesus. And God says to Peter, shut up. Listen to my son. So he's someone that was there. Also, get this, Peter this man, we're going to read this, he walked on top of water. You know, I've never done that. Have you? Peter walked on water. So he's been around the block. Here's, here's what he says about himself. Now, this is who he is. Simon Peter, a servant. That's as low as you can get. My daughter was sweeping the porch off one day, and she's handicapped, and she didn't like it. And she said, you know what we need? We need us some slaves, don't we? I said, yeah, I'd be real kind to have a few of those. <laughs> but he's a servant. And he says also, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, there's 12 of these guys, 12 apostles that God himself chose. Uh, if you read... Uh, uh, John 17, actually, God gave them to the Son, nonetheless, even Judas. But he says he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. By the way, that's, that's high status. That, that, today, there's supposedly apostles around the world. No, these guys were apostles. These guys are the one Jesus gave the Word of God to to write down for us. 
the, all the New Testament, with some exceptions, come through these apostles. Um, so it, it's high praise to those. Now get this. He's right. He's a servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who obtain, who have obtained a faith of equal standing. Do, do what? Did you realize that the same thing that Peter had, God gave to you if you're a Christian? You ever feel like a second-class citizen? You ever feel that way? You ever feel like God just won't listen to you because you don't have the authority that you need? Remember when they came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, you speak these words. Who gave you this authority? Who gave this authority to you? We didn't give it to you. Where would you get it? Remember what I told you when, when, they, when the Sanhedrin sent men up there to get information on this man Jesus and to arrest him to bring him back because they were going to bring him before the government and said this guy's a blasphemer this guy's an insurrectionist this guy causes all kinds of troubles this guy's a democrat this guy's a republican we need to get rid of him and the men came back and they said where's he at why didn't you bring him uh, they said never a man spoke like this man. There was something about his words that arrested them. There was something about him that was different from anybody they'd ever heard. Matter of fact, when they came in the garden to get him, and he said, who are you looking for? Jesus. And he said, I am he. When he said that, the text says, they fell back as dead men. The word of God that Peter's given us is powerful. It changes people. And he says, to those who obtained a faith equal, of equal standing with ours. Now, how'd that happen? I mean, I've never seen Jesus. I've never slept with him. I've never broke bread with him physically. And Peter says, your faith and my faith the same faith. It's of equal standing. Please don't forget that. Please don't feel like a second-class citizen or a second-class Christian. Because we are children of light, children of God. That's who we are. He said of equal stand with ours, and how is it? By the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In and of himself, he was a flop. He was, he was a mess. And by the way, you are too. If I knew you better than I do, I'd find out that you're just like me. You're a total disaster. You are. Oh, 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 you can dress up and smell like, put some nice clothes on, look pretty good. But take all that garbage off and what? I can see it now. That's who we are. We're fallen creatures. But yet this, we're clothed in the righteousness of this one man that was righteous. He gave us that. He said, so Peter says, hey, hey, I'm a servant and I'm an apostle. And by the way, you're just like me with the same, he says, equal standing before God. You stand there in the righteousness of Je When you make a request... It's like God himself, Christ, makes that request. He hears our cry. Of course, the Lord said, Lord, not my will, but yours. He had confidence that God would do the right thing. By the way, the providence of God is always good. You may not like it. You may not understand it. But if you're a child of God, he don't make no mistakes. He'll do right. So he's our saving. Now, what he's telling us is this. Your faith is an obtained faith of equal value, of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. What this is, this is a, a imputation. That's the theological word to it. That is that God took something that did not belong to you and he imputed it to you. He gave it to you. This is key. This is where my buddy... Martin Luther comes in real handy because 
he had a problem with this when he was reading through the scriptures, and he says, be ye holy as I'm holy, and he, he, he realized he couldn't be holy, and he was always going back to the priest and saying, hey, I want you to pronounce a blessing on me, I want you to forgive me, and the priest got so stinking tired of Martin Luther coming to see him, this is historical, I'm not giving you my opinion, the problem that finally the priest said, Martin, <laughs> at least go out and do some good sins. I'm tired of listening to you. But here's the problem. Martin Luther knew how holy God was, and he knew he wasn't like that. And when he read, the just shall live by faith, one day like a light come on, and he said, oh, I get it now. God counted me as righteous. I'm still not righteous, but he counts me righteous, even though I'm not. So what he done was, God, he... He counted us righteous. In other words, uh, just like, for example, we are not made righteous. I, by the way, one day we will be made righteous. That will happen when he, when he returns. When, when we are of full maturity and, and we become like him because we'll see him as he is, that will happen. So don't worry about getting your life right. You should try because there's... The imperatives are in the second part of this aspect of Second Peter, of what we should do. But right now, he says, you're of equal standing with me. And by the way, he says, this is how it is. Uh, you're not made righteous. You're counted as righteous. And by the way, same thing happened to Jesus. Jesus was not made sinful because there was no sin about him. But God only treated him as if he was sinful. Remember, he's on the cross, and he says this, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God turned his back on him. Why? Because he stood there in my stead. I deserve to be have my back turned on me by God. Christ didn't. I don't deserve for the blessings of God, but he gives them to me anyway by imputation. He imputes them to me. So God was not made sinful, only treated as sinful in our stead. God imputed our sin to Christ and his righteousness to us. Uh, Martin Luther called that the glorious exchange. Canadians exchange their money sometimes down here. Sometimes they feel good about it, and sometimes they feel bad about it. But it's an exchange. God gives us his righteousness. We give him our sin. So Paul, uh, Peter says to him, it's, it's, it's what I'm telling you is, he says, your standing is the same as my standing. There's no difference in us. It's equal. If we could just get that, if we could just understand that, things would change tremendously for us. Also, for our neighbor. You ever been treated unjust? You don't like it, do you? What right did they have to say that to me? Did you see what she said did you hear that? I, t I tell you why we get so angry is because we don't understand this doctrine right here. This doctrine here says we're horribly wrong, but God treats us as if we're exactly right. By the way, if you got that gift, why are you so unwilling to give it to others? It could be because you don't have the gift. And it could be because you don't know this. See, there's this aspect in life. There are Christians that are Christians that, that God has changed their lives, but they don't know these truths. They just don't know them. So therefore, how can they live this way if they don't know this? How can you be an engineer unless someone's taught you engineering? You can't. How can you know something you don't know? John says, these things are written that you might know. Now, by the way, this letter is written 
combating false prophets and false teachers in the church. Some of them, you know, let me, for example, here's what Peter calls these people that are teaching doctrines that are not right or teaching things that are wrong. He calls them fierce wolves that don't spare the flock. Do you know a wolf will kill a sheep and he'll even eat the meat between the hooves? He doesn't leave one morsel of meat. And Peter says these people that are teaching doctrines that are wrong, they're like fierce wolves. They'll devour you. They'll eat you up and could care less about you. King James Version calls them grievous wolves. And they know about sheep. They know about wolves. That's why you had shepherds to keep the wolves away or to rescue the sheep. So he calls them grievous wolves. He calls them false teachers. Gosh, that wouldn't go over in America, would it? You can't say nothing negative about nobody. How dare you say something negative about me? Uh, well, Peter says they're false shepherds. He calls them irrational animals. Now, this is in, this is in the text later in the, in the same book. He calls them irrational animals. You ever seen an irrational animal? I have. I had a friend that had a Labrador. And Labradors are normally pretty good, but he, this Labrador he had was possessed. And he would even bite his own owners. He's an irrational animal. And Peter says these false teachers are irrational, irrational animals. One of the reasons that I, one of the reasons people don't come to church any more than they do is simply because they don't know these truths, these good, these warnings, and also these promises that are in the text. That we we live in a fallen world. That's obvious. Today we'll see that when we honor and remember these thirteen people that have passed from our world that we live in. Pain and suffering is a real thing. But if you know exactly where these people are, someone asked me today, what happens when people die? And, and it's a genuine question, and the Bible answers these questions so that we don't have to guess at it. He calls them blots and blemishes. This guy does. Blots and blemishes. Uh, makeup helps that. But in, in the context here, these blot and blemishes, he, that's what he calls them. He says they're waterless springs. In other words, you would think that you get a good drink of water at spring, right? No. He said these false teachers are like going to a spring. Sounds like good stuff. You get there, they don't have nothing for you to drink. They're waterless. That's amazing to me. I heard a guy just recently uh, has three or four homes. He has a 727, a 747, and a private jet. I know he's got three jets paid for by us, people that don't know him better, people that have been uh, fleeced. I've got a guy in the park here, grew up listening to one of these kind of guys, and he says, Phil, I've had all of them. I don't want none of that. He said, they're, he said, these are not true. And I said, you're exactly right. He's not a believer, and he knows this. Matter of fact, he won't come to church. I'd love to see him come, talk to him all the time. <sighs> what they are, they're waterless springs. They promise you everything, deliver nothing. Uh, send your seed money in. Just make an investment. God will bless you. He won't. It's a promise for his benefit, like a wolf eating the meat of a sheep. He'll take every morsel you have. So that he calls them this. He says they're mist driven by storms. Whichever the wind blows is the way they go. Just whichever way. He calls them dogs and pigs. <laughs> You think that'd go over good in America today? That's exactly what this 
this man that says your faith is with equal standing with me. I'm nobody. Everything we have is by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That everything we have there, it's an equal faith. It's a faith. Uh, that's what Peter says you have. You have from God a righteousness that's not your own. You have a righteousness. You have the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was a gift given to you. You're clothed in that. Don't ever feel like a second-class Christian. But when we come to this communion table, it's a time that Scripture says, Paul said, to examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not. Do you believe this? Do you, is your life based on this? Are you confident in this doctrine here? Or are you confident in what you've accomplished? How faithful you are. How often you take communion. You've never missed communion. You've never missed Sunday school. You've never, you've never said anything bad about your neighbors. Jeff was just telling me earlier. You know, he says, when I came to become a Christian, he said, they asked, anybody here uh, want to be saved or, or have a need? And Jeff said, my hand went up, and I don't know why it went up. It just went up. I don't know why. I know why. The same thing I pray every day I come in here. Lord, if you don't speak to my heart, if you don't open the door to these people's hearts, if you don't resurrect these people from the dead, they'll never respond to you. Oh, they may come. They may be faithful. But it takes a miracle. It takes something that's unexplainable. By the way, We'll read one aspect of it because the whole message is about the glory of God. And you think, well, okay, the, it's not what you think. The glory of God. How is the glory of God revealed? Now, here's what Jesus said. By the way, his disciples hear him pray these prayers. In John 17, we'll read a verse, see a verse in a minute. I'll read this in a second, too. In John 17, he says something specific about him going to the cross. He's about to go to the cross. And actually what he says, he says, Father... I want you to glorify me. How's he going to do that? He's going to kill him. That ain't much glory, is it? Yes, it is. Because the only way I can have his righteousness, the only way I can have that righteousness, if God justly condemns sin in Jesus, and he don't have any. That's why he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God is doing something to display his glory in the fact that he's going to give me salvation, but he just can't give it to me because he's benevolent. He's got to be just. That's why Jesus had to die. I had a friend tell me, Jesus was so nice, healing people, feeding people. Why, why, did, why did he have to die? And Acts 1 says he had to die because God, the Father, decreed it. He also said it wasn't, it wasn't against what you wanted. You wanted it too. Both we wanted it because we were just mean. God wanted it because he was good. <laughs> so, now, why did he do that? You know, why did God let sin in the world? Couldn't he have just made us poor that we'd never sin? Sure he could have. But what he couldn't do, he's going to, he's going to display his glory even over wrong and sinfulness. That's why when he sent his children into Egypt, think about this. They were there for 500 years begging God to deliver them. These were the Hebrews because the the Egyptians were ruling over them and making them build bricks and stones and build things and feeding them leeks and garlic. And they said, oh, please deliver us, please deliver. And so God comes down to, you know what? The text says that many times Pharaoh had gotten so fed up with the plagues and so fed up with the people that he would have let them go. But you know what God, the scripture says? This will blow your minds. God hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he wouldn't let him go. Whoa. How are you going to process that? i tell you how we're going to process it. Our God 
is sovereign for his family. Do you know what it means to be in a family? You know what it means to be a child of God, to be a child of light, to be someone that was dead in trespasses and sin, and the Word came along and resurrected you and gave you life and now placed you in a brand new creation according to the Corinthians? God done that. Why? Because you were special? No, no, no. Because you deserved it? No, no, no. Because he chose you out of the world. How special is that? For no reason. He just chose you. Now, let me read through this, Jeff. Verse 2, may grace and peace, by the way, that's what we need, grace and peace, be multiplied. We've got it, but we need to be multiplied. How? To you, in how's it going to come? In the knowledge of God. One of the reasons that we don't have this is because we don't know this. That's one of the reasons we don't have it. you got to know it. you gotta, you, you got to read it and understand it and know it. And the, the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, both of those. Now go to verse 3, Jeff. His divine power, his divine power, what is that? His sovereignty. His divine power is granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's his power that done. That's why Paul said in Romans, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. That's what he said. He said to pertain to life and God. Now how is he going to do it? Through the knowledge of him. He's going to do that through the who called us. <laughs> he called us. Jeff, you know why your hand went up? He called you. You wasn't even aware of it. You're like me. You're just a dumb hayseed. <laughs> but he called you. And you, your hand went, why is it my hand? Jeff told me earlier. He said, I don't know why my hand went up. I don't know why that I, I don't know. I don't know. But he says, I know this. I, I'm different than I was. Now, he's still a sinner. He's still got a lot of problems, but he's different. He said, who called us through the knowledge of him, who called us to his own glory and his excellence. We'll see it just in a second. By which, now this, by, this, by this calling, by this granting, by which, why, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises. He's granted them to you. You didn't earn them. God ain't got a scale up there weighing things out. And Peter says, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is a close one. Hey, God, come here and say, the scales are kind of close. Can you stand back at a distance? And can you, is it more good? Or, I, I can't really tell. It's close. That's not the case. You're there in his righteousness. That's radical. He said, granted us his precious and very great promises, so that through them, through those promises, through them, you may become partakers of the divine nature. By the way, a little later in this same chapter, he's going to go down and talk about these things. But he says, you've been granted, become partakers of the divine nature through these great and precious promises. Having escaped, by the way, <laughs> this world one day is going to be burned up as we know it. And it's not going to just vanish. God's going to, the Bible says he's going to purge it. I don't know all of what that means. But he's going to purge this earth and re-inhabit it with this earth with just his kids, us, that have been brought to life by the will of God and the power of God, and the determination of God alone. Now, why did he pass over some? I don't know, and neither do you. But he says here, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Now, I tell you what, we have sinful desire. By the way, you don't lose it. You don't get rid of it. We're in the world, but we're not part of the world. 
We're, the Bible tells us this. He says we are a new creation created in who? In Christ. We're created in Him. It's a brand new... John 1 and Genesis 1 is the same exact thing. Go look at sometimes John 1 and read it. It's, it's the creation of, of, of a word that's an active word that comes into the world to create a brand new world that cannot be in, in that cannot be infected by sin. That's why once God puts in you his life, you can't lose that. God, you didn't have anything to do with your first birth. Can you imagine? I don't know where these people are, but somewhere there's a baby out there in space. Somewhere says, you know what? I think I want to be born. I'll tell you, I'm going to choose this girl here and this boy here. No. That, they were nothing. But God brought a human into this world through the, through the mystery of birth. And today we can't even determine what's a man and a woman. We, we don't know. Everybody's equal. Everybody gets a trophy. All you got to do is just attend, just attend church, and in the end, God will give you a trophy, and he'll say, well, you deserve the prize like everybody else deserves a prize. But that's not the case. Now, I think it's a, Jeff, bring up John. Now, look, this is Jesus' high priestly prayer. Listen to what Jesus says to his father. He's praying. He says, the glory, by the way, he said, glorify me with the same glory we had before I ever left heaven. He is going to glorify him that way. He said, the glory that you have given me, I have given them. I've given the same glory to them that you gave to me. Now, what's his purpose? Why did he do this? Why did God go to all this trouble? Why does he have to be just? Why do we have to have grace? Why do we have to have mercy? Why? And what's the purpose in it? He says that they may be one, even as we are one. God is going to make his children just like him. Now, I can tell you this about marriage. It's a wonderful institution. I love marriage. Uh, last Sunday, I was married 47 years. I love it. My next 47 will be better than my last 47 because I'm, lear I'm learning some stuff. But here's the deal. We are closer to being alike today than we were 47 years ago. We like the same type of architecture. We like the same type of a lot of things. Same foods. Same, we're, 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 through, we're being made one. Now, what God is saying here to his father, he says, I want you to make them just like we're one. You know, when you're married and the two become one, it don't ever work just exactly right because people divorce. Or people stay married, but I just can't stand him or her. Let them go golfing. Let them go fishing. Let them go shopping. I just need a break. Oh, please, a break. Give me a break. Well, that's not the design of marriage. The design of marriage is two to become one. But because of our fallenness, because of our first creation, we can never achieve that. But this new one will. Do you know that in heaven there's neither male nor female? Do you know that in heaven there's neither... Uh, married people, unmarried people. Do you know in heaven there's not two sexes? Do you know that? It's true. Scripture tells us it is. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know this, when he appears we'll be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What God is doing is making us, by the way, this has been true in my life, I bet in yours too, have you ever had somebody that's outside your family and, and for some reason you like them really well? Maybe better than a family member. It's called a friend. That's what it's called. It's called a friend. Now, by the way, you can be friends with family members. It's just harder. 
God is making us different. Not flesh and blood anymore, but without disease, without sinful desires, without division, He's making us one. This park, I know this for a fact, I hear it all the this park is full of people hating one another. Oh, maybe not terribly hate, but I can't stand them. Let them stay on their lot, I'll stay on my lot. It's just part of who we are. I've invited people to church, and they say, well, I ain't I come to church up there because here's why I ain't. And they tell me some little story about something that maybe one of y'all done to them, and they ain't coming back. I get it. I get I get it. I get it. I understand. Because sometimes I want to give them peace of my mind, too. But God is doing this. Peter says, do you understand that you're standing with me as equal with an apostle? Do you understand who you are? Do you understand what God is doing? He's, what he's doing, the glory of God is going to rest on us. The glory that, I have, that you have given me, I've given to them. By the way, it's real easy to give a gift when you've been given a gift. Sometimes I go out to eat and they'll be really nice to me. I, I like to tip. But if they're just over the top, I thought, well, gosh, we, we didn't get. One time, me and my buddies went out to eat, and this girl waited on us, and we were talking, and I said, fellas, there was four of us. I said, let's give her a $100 tip. Now, we don't have that kind of money, but all of us agreed to do it. So we left the restaurant. She had uh, was new to a little, little fish place. We went out in the parking lot. I was getting ready to get in our cars and go somewhere. She comes out of the restaurant and crying. And she says, I want to tell you a story. My dad's a preacher in North Carolina. And I got pregnant. Not married. And the boy I got pregnant with left me. And my dad said, I, 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 you can't live here no longer. She said, so I don't have a place to live. I'm telling you, you don't understand the problems people have. You got somebody that's just hard to get along with, you don't walk in their shoes a while. It's different. But he says, the same thing you give me, God, I'm, I give to them, that they may be one salvation and Peter's trying to write about this great he calls it the great salvation it, it moved him by the way he's going to die the scripture says in in second Peter he says I know God has showed me I'm going to shortly put off this tabernacle I, I know I'm going to die Nero's got him by the way Nero is not a nice guy he's going to kill him And Peter says, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you, I want to tell you these truths. I, I want you to understand this. I want you to see this. I want you to desire the same things that God desires for you to be like Jesus. To be changed. I know why we're in such a mess. And I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. It's because that the church don't know this. Uh, I tell you what I like better. I, I like chicken, a good chicken dinner at church. I tell you what I like better, I, and, and I love music. A, a good concert, I love it. I'll come out for that. But don't you dare tell me something about me that I don't like. And this stuff here, it's why Peter says we've not followed cunningly, cunningly devised fables and myths. We were there on the Mount of Transfiguration. We heard this. God told me this. Listen, I was with him when he prayed this prayer. By the way, this prayer in John 17, he's getting ready to go to the cross. They're going to come and get him. And he's praying this for us. No wonder the song means a lot to me. We have no friend like Jesus. Well, Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your 
um, thank you for loving us. Uh, you didn't have to. We didn't prompt that you love us, but you, you loved us. And you gave your life for us. Father, build your church up with these great, great doctrines of truth that transcend even my reason. I, I can't reason this. You know, there's many things about this I say, gosh, I don't, I don't understand that fully. But yet your words are true. You, you cannot lie. You cannot lie because that's who, that's who you are. Father, bless your church. Help us to understand these wonderful, wonderful promises. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Pam. Thank you, Pastor. We've been hearing about the, the glory of God through his son, Jesus Christ. What a wonderful passage and a word this morning. You know, we're going to end the services today with a song, To God Be the Glory. And that's what we sing, and that's how we praise him. It's on page 56. If you would stand with me, please, and we will sing the first and the last verse. <laughs> I want you to hear this just as a little unusual benediction, but comes from this, a little passage is past our John 22, 17, 22. The glory that God hath given me, I give to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me, and love them even as you've loved me. Good news. We're going to sing our song as we've been singing. Thank you, Lord, the gift of his salvation. All right, Dennis. <laughs> We'll see you back here at 1. Have a blessed day.